Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something a bit different for you. I got this idea quite recently and what we'll do is that we're gonna build our own watercolor palette. Okay, so I made myself a swatch sheet here with all the colors that I have are Van Gogh colors, which are student grade watercolors, but I read about them and I read that they use really good pigments and their colors are pretty light fast. Some colors don't resist to the light, which means that they will fade over time. Um, so these colors are not considered as light fast, but most Van Gogh colors are light fast. And that's why you can see some professionals use them. Obviously you don't see them much, but this is what I have. But you'll see that I also have some Windsor and Newton colors and some Daniel Smith colors. So I bought this. This is a small watercolor palette. What's nice is that you have a pan here. You open it, you have another pan and you have enough room to place 28 half pans. So it's a lot of room for my watercolors. First of all though, before we fill this up, is swatching. I'm gonna swatch every color that I have to see which one I like the best. I wrote the names of each color that I have and their light fastness level if I have them. I have them for the Van Gogh colors but I have to go see on the websites for the Windsor & Newton and for the Daniel Smith colors. I'm gonna first swatch them and while they dry, I'm gonna do some research about their light fastness because that might influence which colors I put in my palette. I think my brush might be a little bit dirty because I'm not sure about this color. Okay, it's not that bad. Now we move on to Van Gogh Titanium Buff. So nice and beige. I think maybe my brush was a little bit dirty for the titanium white because usually it's not that blue. Now we have the Naples Yellow, which I I like this color so much on the website that I bought another one without knowing I already had it. So I have two of these now. So sorry if you hear some plane noises or other kinds of noises. Uh, you know, I don't live alone. And also, I live in the city, so I close the window, but there's not much else you can do. I also have some neighbors, so sometimes you can hear them as well. Now let's move on to the Van Gogh Permanent Lemon Yellow. I got this idea of making a watercolor palette in um, Natasha Newton's videos. She does that a lot and I really like her vibe and I like that you can create your own watercolor palette using only the colors that you prefer and her videos are really nice. I really recommend seeing them. I'll link her channel in the description below. But what she does that I particularly like is that she does her own palettes based on some themes. So for example, she'll have like a, a night palette. These are all like dark colors that she uses a lot. So she has her night palette, she has her fall palette, she has a handmade watercolor palette. So it's always super interesting. She always swatches all the colors. She explains what she likes in the colors and it's always so relaxing first of all to watch and if you want to buy new colors it's a really nice video to watch because it tells you a lot um, information about the different colors oh so i don't know if i told you but we just did the winter and newton cotman cadmium yellow hue and now we're doing the winter and newton yellow ochre which is a color that i absolutely love 
is for sure going to be in my palette. I use yellow ochre all the time. Now we move on to the Winsor & Newton Permanent Orange. I'm not a big fan of orange, so I don't know if I'm going to put it in my palette, although I guess it's a good color to have. Now, Van Gogh Vermilion. This one is one of the least light fast colors that I have, so although it's a very pretty color, I'm not sure if it's going to make it into my palette because if I want to sell some originals at some point, the colors need to be light fast. But uh, so pretty. And having a swatch sheet like this is going to be very useful in the future because I can always refer back to it when I paint because you never know what the colors will truly look like. They look like something in the tube, but you can't tell until you've swatched them what they'll truly look like. Now we have a Winsor & Newton Cotman Cadmium Red Hue, which I'm hoping will be more light fast than the one I just did. The color seems similar, so maybe it's gonna be a good replacement. Maybe I can use this one in my palette instead of Vermilion. As you can see, it's pretty similar. It's a bit on the colder side, and I have to say I usually like warmer tones. But it's not that bad, it's not that bad. I don't know much about the light fastness of this one. This is one on which I have to do a little bit of research. So who knows if it's light fast or not? Probably is, but how much, I don't know. Now we move on to the Van Gogh Crinacridon Rose. I don't tend to use pinks a lot, so I'm not sure if it's gonna make it in the palette but you never know maybe swatching it will make me discover this color but it's a beautiful color on the cool side which is also something i don't gravitate towards that much we'll see how it behaves with the water and the last one for this row is also a pink it's van gogh rose this one is one of the least light fast that i have as well from what I've read, the colors that are most on the neon side often are less light fast. It's on the cool side as well, but I don't know, there's something that I like in this color. At the same time, I don't know how I would use it. It's good to have swatched it because I'm obviously going to keep the paint tube, even if it's not in my palette. So I know what it looks like, and when I need a pink, I know I can use that one. Now we are with the Van Gogh Crinacridon Purple Blue. It's a color I haven't used much. You know, the purples, the pinks, they're not my favorites. But you never know, sometimes with in water you can or if I, I paint sunsets, I could use these. I don't paint sunsets too much, so maybe I should try to paint some more and include them in my paintings. I'm gonna go change my water because, yeah, the color is not great. And I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I brought two jars this time, so maybe it'll last me a little bit longer. Now, let's go into... Van Gogh Cobalt Blue Ultramarine. This looks like a beautiful color. Now let's move on to the Van Gogh Phthalo Blue, which is a light fast color. And it's gonna be interesting to see the difference between the Ultramarine Blue and the Phthalo Blue. From what I read, the Phthalo Blue is more on the green side but still blue but it's it's a bit more green I think yeah I can see that it's a different kind of blue 
Now we have the cerulean blue phthalo from Van Gogh again. Another reason why I want to do my palette is that I, I'm scared that the colors in the tubes will dry at some point. I don't really want that to happen. So if I do a palette, then it's going to be fine if they dry because they're going to be easy to use. But if they dry in the tubes, it's going to be really hard to use them anymore. So nice to see similar colors swatched like this because I can really see the difference between the colors, which is something that in the tubes maybe I wouldn't it wouldn't be as easy. Now the turquoise blue from Van Gogh. So now we are moving on to greener colors. All of these colors I bought from the Serre, which is a local art store. I think they have a couple of stores all throughout Quebec. I don't know if they have stores in other provinces or in the States. I'm not sure, but you can find these colors anywhere pretty much. So the turquoise green. These are colors that I use a little bit more because I tend to do a lot of landscapes. Oh, I like this one. I like how it's like a bit more muted compared to the others. And these are colors that I like. I like muted colors. I use brighter colors to add a touch, like a pop of color. I feel like this is really pretty, but in general, I really like muted colors. So now we have the permanent green from Van Gogh. This is the sap green, Van Gogh sap green. And what's interesting is that I also have the Daniel Smith sap green. So I'll be able to compare the two colors. I love this green. It's a warm green. Beautiful. I want to use it now, <laughs> but I can't wait to see the Daniel Smith version. Oh my God, which is coming up next. At first glance, it seems like it can be more opaque than the Van Gogh sap green, but maybe it's just because I I put more on my brush. But, oh, wow. This is a very beautiful color. Now we are going to swatch the Van Gogh olive green, which should also be on the warmer side. That's something that I like in my greens, as I told you. Oh, and, and the video that I particularly like from Natasha Newton is that she made her greens palette. So she swatched all her green colors and she created a palette with these. So it's um, it was very fun to watch and that's how I, I chose my two Daniel Smiths colors. These are my first Daniel Smiths that I have. So I watched her video carefully. I wanted to see the difference between all the greens that she had so I could pick mine. Now we have the Windsor & Newton Cutman Hooker's Green Dark. This one is much bluer. And still a very pretty color. And now for the other exciting part is the Daniel Smith Rare Green Earth. This was one of the colors that I saw in Natasha Newton's video and oh my God, it was so pretty. Okay, so these are my first two Daniel Smith's colors and I feel like I can really see the difference in the texture because this one too is way more opaque. At first I thought maybe I just put more on my brush, but I think it's just that the paint itself is a bit more creamier. I feel like in the Van Gogh one, there's, there's kind of an oily feeling, a separation sometimes of the pigment, but 
not in this one. Obviously, uh, this is a more recent acquisition for me. So maybe it's just that. I guess we'll see over time. Okay, so now I'm going to change my water again because I'm, we are moving on onto the brown colors, coppers, grays. So I don't want to mix any colors in there. So I'll be back. Okay, now we move on to the Van Gogh copper. I always really like the brown shades, the like the earth tones. I always love these colors. So the copper is a light fast color. The color is really interesting. And I have to say that I haven't used it much, I think. But it's a metallic color. It could be really pretty in some landscapes. I think I should use it more. Then we have the Van Gogh Light Oxide Red, which is a color, a color that I love. So beautiful. This one is going in my palette for sure. It'd be interesting to have like a professional equivalent just to see the difference. Now we have the Burnt Sienna, which is also a very beautiful color. And it's gonna be especially nice to see all of these swatch next to each other because, you know, with the earth tone, sometimes it's easy to, I don't know, you, they just all look similar sometimes in the tubes, so. Sepia, this is also a color that I've had for uh, quite a bit, but I discovered it recently because I think it doesn't look like it does on the tube. When you dilute it, I feel like you get something that's a bit more unexpected. Like it's a really pretty brown. I don't know, and you can almost see a bit of green in there. I like it very much. Now uh, we move on to the Van Dyke Brown, still from Van Gogh. I'm interested in seeing what it looks like once it's swatched. But I think it's more on the cool side. See? It's not as yellow as the sepia. Uh, and now we have the ivory black, which I have to say I don't use a lot. I don't use black a lot in my paintings. Sometimes I do, but it's not a common color for me. And we have our last colors. Before I get to the interference white that is right here, I'm just going to put some more black here. Because I want to see, I recently discovered that interference colors are meant to be used on dark colors because they bring, they add an interesting effect. So let's just put this here, wait for it to dry. Now we have the paint gray, which is a color that I use a lot. This is the color that I pretty much use instead of using black. It's a bit more blue. So when it's really opaque, it almost looks like black. But when you dilute it, you get more blue. See, it's very nice, a very nice color. Now we have the graphite, which I think is also a color I don't use a lot. Also a Van Gogh color. It's kind of metallic as well. Let's keep the interference white because I want to have some really clean water when I use it. So we will do the last two, which is the dusk yellow. It's a color that I absolutely love. I've used it when I did my Japanese dinner painting, which is on my channel if you want to see. I was completely surprised about the granulation of this color. It looks exactly like a nori sheet. And the dusk colors are also very interesting because it's dusk yellow, but it's not yellow at all. I have to do some research about that because I can't explain it. Is it like how yellow would look like at night or I don't know. But the granulation, you can see it immediately. It's amazing and it's for sure going to be in my palette. It looks amazing. I have no words. I'm going to show you a close-up later. 
And now we have the dusk violet, which as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, the tube is broken, so that sucks. The dusk violet, I don't think I've used. So it's interesting to see how it's gonna turn out. Will it be as granulating as the dusk yellow? We will find out very soon. Oh, I think so. I think this is a, a violet that I'm gonna put in my palette. Even if I said that I don't use purples that much, this one is different. So pretty, oh my God. And now the interference white. Um, I think I'd like to have more interference color because I didn't know it, they were meant to be used on dark colors. So at first I was just like, I don't know, didn't understand really why you would use them because they don't look like much when they are on just on paper like this. But apparently if you use them on top of darker colors, they bring out an interesting color. You can see it really well on top of a dark color, which is something you don't really get with light colors. Usually you work from light to dark in watercolors because if you want to put a light color on top of a dark color, you won't see it. But you can see an effect here, which knowing that now is something I'll be able to use in future paintings. And I'd like to see a bunch of uh, interference colors and see how they behave on dark colors just to see the difference. But this is the only one I have for now. So these are all of my swatches. And I keep saying in this, I can put 28, but I counted again and I can put 21 colors. So I don't know why I thought 28. There's only three rows of seven pans, but it's okay because in here I have 34 colors and there's a couple that I already know that I'm not very interested in. So I need to eliminate 13 colors, which is good because I think it's gonna force me to have a more limited color palette, even though 21 colors isn't very limited, but I'll only choose the ones that I really prefer. The thing is, you know, I have this lemon yellow. It's not a color that I'm gonna use very much, just like this. It's way too bright, but I feel like it's useful in a set because it's useful to mix other colors. So I think I will just keep this one in its tube and I'll put it on the side. I'll just use it when I wanna mix. But for this palette, I want to put colors that I could use as is. Of course, I might mix some colors. I really like doing that, but I'm gonna focus on my favorites. So first impressions right now is that titanium white isn't a color that I use very much. So I don't think I'm gonna put it in. In this row, I am not sure about the rose. I like the quinacridone rose when I think about it because it's a bit more warm compared to the rose. The rose is too blue and I'm not sure I like that very much. I'm not sure about the vermilion. I like this color but it's not very light fast, so I don't know. In this row, I'm not sure about the purple blue. As I said, I don't really use purple. I don't really like purple. So this one, I'm not sure. These two are quite similar, but I like the warmer one better. Not sure about this one, I don't know. We will see what I do about this one. I like all the greens, I would say that this one is my least favorite. I think it makes sense. I like more muted colors and this one is, is too bright. It's like, it's too much, <laughs> too much. I love this sap green, <gasps> I love it so much. I also really like this one. So I think I'm gonna put the two in because they look very different to me. I love this rare green earth, amazing. The copper, really, I don't think I care that much about it, so I would eliminate it. These, love, love, love. Van Dyke Brown, eh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Ivory Black, as I said, I don't use black too much, so I think maybe I'll just put it aside with the white. So I'll use black and white when I need them, but not in my palette. 
Penny's gray, of course, is gonna be in there. Graphite, I hate, I hate, hate, hate so much this one. I'm not gonna put it in. Interference white, I am not sure. I think I prefer the color on the white, but it looks a lot like titanium buff, and I think I prefer titanium buff. So maybe interference white, I'm not going to use it. These two, I absolutely love. These are my favorite. I need more dusk colors. Wow. If they are all going to behave like this with the amount of granulation, I mean, I need all of them. So I did some research about the light fastness of some of these colors. So the Windsor and Newton, I had two series. I have the Professional series and I have the Cotman series. Um, so the Cotman series, as I found out, is a student grade paint. It's light fastness is represented by letters. So A means that it's light fast and AA, which is more found in the professional series, is means that it's very light fast. So the yellow ochre and the titanium white that I have in the professional series are very light fast. And the ones that I have from the Cutman series, which are the cadmium yellow hue the cadmium red hue and also I think I had another one. The Cutman's Hooker's Green Dark are light fast. Less light fast than the Professional series, but I think it's still acceptable since all of the other colors that I have except for the Daniel Smith are student grade. So I think they're on par with the ones that I have, maybe even better. I don't know. As for the Daniel Smith colors that I have, the two that I have, they are extremely night fast, which means that they will last for a hundred years and more. So no problem at all with these. Now let's go on to some close-ups. As I said earlier, I need to eliminate 13 colors, so I think it's gonna be easier to focus on the ones that I know I don't like and then see if I need to get rid of more. So starting with the bottom row, I think this one I do not like. This one is a question, so I'm gonna just put a dot here. Um, I like, oh, this ivory black, I said I wouldn't put it in copper as well. Um, I think the permanent green I will not put in. The purple I won't. The white I said I wouldn't. The yellow here, no. Naples yellow, I'm not sure. Permanent orange, I am not sure. So let's put a dot here. This one, I'm not sure. I really like the color, but it's not light fast. So I don't know. This rose one, I won't use it. So let's count the ones that I'm sure I won't use. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I need to eliminate five. So I have one that I'm not sure here. One, two, three, four. I will need to eliminate another one. I have lots of blues here, I'm not sure it's necessary to use all of them. I'm not sure about the Naples yellows as well because even though it's not my favorite from what I'm seeing, I know it's a color that I use. So I think I should leave it in. So I still have six to eliminate. So this one I am I'm not putting in, this one either, this one. Let's focus on these because I know I have way too many blues. I'm not going to use all of these. So let's eliminate at least one. I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. So between the two, I think I'm going to get rid of this one. Because I like cobalt blue. I like it. I think it's nice. I like the granulation. This one is more boring. So let's get rid of this one. I need to get rid of one more. Um, so I wasn't sure about the Van Dyke Brown. I think I could get rid of it. 
Should I though? Should I? Because it's a bit darker than this one. If I'm looking at the more diluted version, it tends to be more towards a black than this one. And this one is a way, it's way more blue. So maybe it's good that I have two, one that's more blue and one that's more on the warmer side. So I can have like two different kinds of almost black colors. So I would maybe tend to keep this one. So I need to get rid of an other one then. So maybe I would get rid of the quinacridone rose because it's not a color that I use that much. So let's get rid of that one. So now we have our 13 colors that we have eliminated. So I did a little swatch sheet here that I'm gonna put in the lid here. So every time I, I wanna select my colors, I know exactly what they are. All right, let's start with the titanium buff. So I heard you should want to um, make sure there's no air bubbles. So that can happen, especially in the, the corners. I don't want to completely fill them up because I don't want the paint to spill from one pen to the other. So here it is. I feel like I could fill out like at least four of those half pens with one tube. Now we have the Naples yellow. So it's been a couple of weeks um, I've waited for it to dry before I could use it. I think it's been quite hot and humid, so it took a bit of time to dry. Now, if you are very observant, you might see that I might have used it already, <laughs> but I wasn't focusing on the palette itself. It was during a plein air painting. And I thought that this palette would be the perfect paint to bring because it's so small and there's pretty much all the colors that I want. So I brought it. But today I really want to focus on this palette, on its usability, its usefulness and paint this drawing here, which is also a portrait for the 100 head challenge, but I figured might as well kill two birds with one stone. I think that's how the expression goes. I will use this side of the palette too because I haven't last time and this is going to be a chance for me to dry the palette fully. So I think I'm just going to start with some, some washes for her dress. So we'll start with her dress.
I used my Prismacolor Premier colored pencils to do the sketch. I of course did it first with a normal pencil, but then I went over it with my colored pencils. Let's use the yellow ochre. I might have to mix a an orange for her hair because she's a redhead. And I don't have a specific plan on the order in which I'm painting this one. I'm just really going with the flow. The only thing I want to make sure is um, I want to be intentional about the values. So what I mean is that I want to be aware of where the lightest and the darkest values are so I can make sure that there's a good contrast in my image and yeah, just have a better result. I think usually I, I'm i lucky in the way that I have a good instinct for these things, I think. But now I just want to practice being intentional about it. Let's try to clean that yellow so I can use it to create an orange. So it took a little bit of time for it to dry, I thought. In the videos that I watched, I thought that it would dry quicker, quicker. It would dry quicker. I thought that the next day I would be good to use it, but turns out that that's not what happened. And I think it's just because it was very hot and humid, so it really didn't dry. I think I'm gonna try to create a darker value for her hair. I think this light oxide can be good for the darker areas. I wanted to say about this palette is that I almost didn't put the Naples yellow in and now I realize how important it was to put it in because I think it's gonna be a very important color when it comes to creating light skin tones. I have a lot of browns so for darker skin tones I think I'm pretty much covered because I can always mix with my other colors but I think the Naples yellow is really going to be a staple for light skin tones and I think I'm going to use it right now to create her skin. I think I'm going to mix it with some titanium buff.
So it's been two months since I started this video, almost exactly. So it's going to be interesting to see how much my hair grew. Maybe I need to cut my bangs at least. But I just wanted to come back here and tell you my final thoughts on the palette that I made. Um, in short, amazing. I love it. Well, the most amazing part is just its portability. It's so small, it's so easy to bring when you want to do a plein air painting, when you want to go on vacation, when you want to travel, go visit your family. You can just put it in your bag, bring some paper and some brushes, and then you're all good. You have everything you need in one place. So I did this painting here, which I have to say, is far from being my favorite, but it was just a test. And as you've seen, I've also used some acrylic inks and my Prismacolor pencils to add a little bit of details. Um, but then I also used it to create this one later on. These are all paintings that you've seen if you've watched my last video, the sketchbook tour in which I presented all the portraits I did for the 100 head challenge. So you've seen this one already. If you haven't seen this video, go check it out. It's worth it. And the best part is that I've tested it to do some plein air painting. So having this tiny palette was perfect to bring outside. And you can see that it's been scratched already. That means that I've used it. That's good. So I've created two plein air paintings. The first is this one. I did it in a park in Montreal. It was my birthday actually, so at the end of the month of July. And then I created this second painting, which I did during my summer vacations. We went to a national park in Quebec that is quite far from where I live, so we did one week there. And on our last day, I painted this painting, which I'm in love with. It was so much fun to do. Since I can remove the individual pans, I will always be able to replace some colors to put my new colors if I buy any. Um, because right now I have two more Daniel Smith colors, two blue colors that aren't in this palette yet, but I really want to put them in because they're Daniel Smith. So I will. On other news, if you want to have a tiny little life update, here is my first oil paint that I did ever in my life. I did it yesterday and I love it. I have so many questions though about oil painting now, but more to come on that later. And also today, oh, I made some muffins. That's it, that's all the updates. So thank you for being here with me again today. We are almost at 400 subscribers on my channel. So thank you so much if you're one of them. If you're not, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you back. And if you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you later.